Welcome back to LED Live. Today we're going to talk about some celebrities that invite spirits into their lives so that they can do better actings. Do you know which ones do this? Find out on this episode of LED Live. So before we get into this topic of which celebrities are using demonic influences to actually help them in their acting, we want to thank our Patreon donors for allowing us to be able to do what we do. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Every show we will thank you. You will probably hear us say this a million times, but thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are literally the reason that keeps the lights on in this uh, operation. So we just thank you guys. If you also want, to become a, a Patreon donor, um, we do post shows often after we do a particular topic. If you guys want a little bit more uh, detail, definitely check out our Patreons. We also want to share with you, this video is sponsored by videomission.com. Uh, it's a Christian stock media resource. Check these guys out. And there's a lot of really high class video reenactments of biblical topics. If you guys are making YouTube videos and you need some cool footage to be, a, be able to illustrate those topics, check out videomission.com. Uh, also, t-shirts. We sell t-shirts, so boom, you know boom, it's a great way boom. to support and uh, wear the witness when people walk around and go, oh wow, where'd you get that cool t-shirt? You can say, I got it from Little Light Studios. Uh, you should check out their YouTube page. Um, today's topic is going to be taken from actually a couple of uh, projects we've worked on. One called the Gnostic Gospels. We made a documentary that really deals with the, the, the movies like uh, The Matrix 300, uh, a lot of those. Trump, or yeah, Trump. Trumpville. <laughs> Trumpville. <laughs> Truman Show. And those, those kind of movies that take biblical themes and flip them upside down. Also, there's another one called False System of Worship that um, this one specifically is gonna be taken from. And uh, you can get these on our website, Little Light Studios. All right, let's get into this. Everybody's excited to get into this. Mm. We have a guest on our show again, Leah has been joining us for the last couple of episodes and uh, she came out of the New Age movement mm -hmm. into Christianity. We heard her testimony. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely uh, check out some of the other videos in our YouTube page. You'll ha hear her whole testimony and then the topic of, of the New Age movement. Also um, go to her channel, Leah for the Light. And that's it'll right. Be in the description. Leah for the Light. You can uh, subscribe to her channel as well. She has a real passion to share her experience of, of really the joy and peace that Christ has given to her. That's and right. um, so we're excited to have you on the show today. Thank I you. wanted to do this show with her here because Hollywood has a lot of connection to the New Age movement. Really? So, <laughs> yeah, this might be a shocker for some of you, but uh, hold on to your seats. Um, uh, many of you have probably heard of Aleister Crowley, yes. right? Yeah, yep. So I kind of want to just set the stage with this. Um, if you don't know that much about Aleister Crowley, he's kind of like the, the modern version of the, the most occultic person. He used a lot of magic and sorcery, and uh, Hollywood's been obsessed with this guy for a long time. He was on the Beatles cover. Um, there's a lot of connections between modern day movies and his writing, but he Can wrote a book. Can you define the occult in like a sentence? Sure, the occult is really using supernatural means, um, magic, spells, sorcery, um, and specifically to get what you want in this world. A lot of what we heard from Leah and her talking about the New Age movement is really like the secret and, and you know, really um, dealing with thinking about yourself and how you could manifest those things. This is kind of like that, but with, with sort of like up a few notches kind mm -hmm. of a thing, you know? Okay. So he wrote a book called Magic and Practice and Theory. Listen to what he says. There are three main methods for invoking any deity. So you want to invoke a god into your life. He said the third method is the dramatic and perhaps the most attractive at all. Certainly it is to the artist's temperament for it appeals to the imagination through his aesthetic sense. Let me put that mm. in layman's terms for you. If you want to invoke a spirit into your life, he's saying that one of the the three great ways to do this is through acting. Wow. Mm -hmm. Interesting, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that, that Hollywood is very into this guy. Socrates, you know, he wrote a lot about the muse. What is a muse, muse do you know? Uh, an inspiration, right? It's an inspiration. Like, yeah, what gives you your inspiration? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what he says. In like manner, the muse, first of all, inspires men herself because they are inspired and possessed. 
they are simply inspired to utter that which the muse impels them to 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 do. And you talked a little bit about this mm -hmm. on on the show. You know, it's like you know you've got these voices that are mm -hmm. talking to you mm -hmm. and inspiring you to do this or to do that, right? And kind of showing you a slideshow of some new thing or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Right. Right, yeah. so Socrates is saying the same thing, for not by art or by knowledge do you say what you say, but by possession. Wow. Whoa. Which is kind of an interesting, interesting idea that he was bringing out. This came from a book called Actors on Acting. Now, I'm gonna go over some history, okay? So this, this, this you may or may not have ever heard of these, these, these kind of actors. These are well before your guys' time. Hmm. And well before ours, actually, contrary <laughs> to maybe your belief. <laughs> have you ever heard of Rudolph Valentino? No. Okay, Rudolph, like Rudolph Valentino was like the Brad Pitt of the 1920s. You have the heard of Brad Pitt. The black and white Brad Pitt. Okay, yeah. you know who Brad Pitt is. Okay. <laughs> We're on the same, same page here. The black here. and white Brad Pitt. Yeah. Yes, literally. This guy was literally so immensely famous. Mm. His movies were all about like passion and love and mm. he would always get the girl and he was like this ladies man, right? Mm -hmm. And when Rudolph Valentino would go out in public, people were so obsessed with him that there was these crowds that would form around him. And they, he often had to have walk around with police officers because mm. it was like riots would almost wow. happen, right? Yeah. This guy was immensely, immensely famous. But what people don't realize is that actually the movies that Valentino made were from his wife, Natasha, who was a huge spiritualist. So listen to this quote. Every night, Valentino's wife, Natasha, would hold a seance calling forth for the spirit world to help her in her creative undertaking. Mm -hmm. They would, with a pen and paper in hand, she would go into a trance and she would start writing, mm -hmm. okay? After the outpourings were typed out, they were brought to the set the next day and given to the director, and that's the, what the movies that oh were made. Oh my made. goodness. So if you go on YouTube and you look at the movies that Valentino made, those scripts Directly were literally from handed script. from the demonic world. Wow. wow. A script written in a day by automatic writing, and you know, the human mind can't even make that happen, but yeah. these demons have already had it planned out, who are we gonna, who's gonna allow us to write mm -hmm. through them, you know? Right. And they so, were like a team. Who does that remind you of in the sports world? What? Where the wife is like doing these spiritual Oh, oh that was, um, 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 oh, he's a big oh, NFL player. Hold on, he's yeah, a quarterback. His wife was a witch or something. <laughs> yeah, what was oh, his name? Is, are you talking about Brady? <laughs> oh my goodness, Brady, yes. Any, any superstitions going into the game? Any special thing you carried into the game on Sunday that you had ducked away somewhere? Uh, I did. I always, um, you know, I've learned a lot from my wife over the years. She's so about the power of intention, you know, and believing things that are really going to happen. And she always makes a little altar for me at the game because she, she just wills it so much. And uh, so she put together a little altar for me that I could bring with pictures of my kids. And I have these little special stones and healing stones and protection stones. And she has me wear a necklace. and take these drops she makes, and I say all these mantras. <laughs> and I stopped it, questioning her a long works. time ago. I did, I just shut up and listened. And at first I was like, this is kind of crazy. And then about four years ago, we were playing the Seahawks and she said, you better listen to me, this is your year, but this is all the things you're gonna have to do to win. And I did all those things and by God, you know, it worked. It was pretty good. <laughs> and then in 2015, it was about early January and she said, you know how much I love you? And I said, yeah. And she said, I just want to let you know this is not going to be your year. Oh. And of course we lost. I said, what does 16 look like? <laughs> and she said, 16 is going to be your year. <laughs> so it was early January this year and I said, babe, i asking, like, do we have a chance? And she said, yeah, but you're going to have to do a lot of work and you're really going to have to listen to me. <laughs> So, man, I listen to her. And right after the game, she said, see, I did a lot of work. You do your work, I do mine. She said, you're lucky you married a witch. I'm just a good witch. <laughs> Tom, Tom Brady's Brady. wife, mm. Giselle, is that her name? Yeah. She mm -hmm. was the Victoria's Secret model, mm -hmm. who is a witch. Wow. Yeah. Just wanted Yikers. to bring that up. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, this stuff still happens today. Um, so, Mae West. You heard of Mae West? 
Come and see me sometime. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Look at this guy. He even knows a line from a movie. Because yeah, I used that's to impressive. hear like these cartoons would say and stuff, like Red wow. Bunny and all that. Yeah, that's actually really impressive. You've heard of Mae West? Nope. Never heard of Mae West. Wow. Wow. Okay, we're not going to digress here too long. My mom is so proud right now. So, 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 so listen to this. This is Mae West right here. 1930s, motion pictures were one of the mainstays of the Great Depression, and attendance to movie theaters skyrocketed. Hello, folks. I wish you up here at uh, Mr. Gorman's beautiful theater to see the uh, grand opening of the premiere of my new picture, I'm No Angel. Of course, I didn't call it I'm No Angel for nothing. Uh, don't forget, come up and see me sometime. Movie star Mae West was also known as the Queen of Sex and the Statue of Libido. Her work helped to topple the biblical sexual boundaries that were deeply embedded in the people of the early 20th century. She can have a romance with somebody outside of wedlock. I've got another man in my life. It was pretty raw. I don't know how many that makes. It was pretty raunchy for that era. Well, when I'm good, I'm very good. But when I'm bad, I'm better. No star had greater impact in the long run than Mae West. Mae West was a one woman sexual revolution. So here's what's going on here. America, you have to understand the history of our country. Like we are rooted in Christianity. Mm -hmm. This country had a lot of like, you know. Christian values. Christian values, mm -hmm. Christian morals. During this era, it was, there wasn't a lot of the stuff that we see today. Mm -hmm. I mean, our, our media has totally tanked. Yeah. Dude. We got some pretty, yeah. like evil stuff out there. But that just wasn't really the case. And here comes along Mae West, which toppled over the biblical understanding of sex mm -hmm. inside of a marriage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So let's, listen to this. This is Mae West's psychic, okay? His name was Kenny Kingston, and he's reflecting back on Mae West in her life. When she was upset that no one had been able to come up with a script idea, she would walk about her room saying, forces, forces, please come and help me with this script. You talked about this. I would do this kind of stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. Right? I would say, you know, help me with this path. Help me uh, with this thing that I'm trying to do. And I used to do automatic writing. Oh, and wow. when wow. you actually invite the spirits in, so, so did you ever actually have experience yeah. of that? Yeah. Wow. Like I would be trying to figure out, you know, what my next steps were. And I would ask for guidance. And then I would just start writing. And I would autom do automatic writing. Would you feel your hand actually moving? Or is it just like whatever was coming out of it's your mind? More just like whatever comes out of your mind you just start writing stuff down and then all of a sudden you have all these ideas and, you're, mm. and it starts to make sense. Wow. Did you feel wow. like they were your own or you knew exactly where they were coming from? I felt like I knew I was getting guidance. Mm. I was like, getting like supernatural guidance. Like you were talking guidance. about that download, you know, that yeah, instant like, knowledge yeah. right then. Yeah, download would be different. It's more auditory mm, okay. where the, the writing, you just it just flows. Wow. So she would get these forces to come into her and help her write a script. And then this is what would happen. She would begin to hear the voices, images. The plot was revealed to her. Mm. She would summon the stenographers and tell them to work around the clock. And she would lie in bed in a trance-like state, dictating as the spirits entered her. And she would write the scripts and hand those to the director. And that's what they'd make. Mm. Wow. This is, this is way back when. We don't right. even get into the modern age yet, right? So you look at Mae West and the movies that she made. Remember she mentioned earlier, I Am No Angel, mm -hmm. right? Or she has like the six, sex at the sensational Mae West. Yeah. So you, these, are, these are topics that we look at today, we don't even bat an eye because we're so <laughs> used to sexual bombardment, right? Mm -hmm. But this was racy stuff back then. Mm -hmm. when, when you think about it, it was, it was like, it's like the devil is writing his Bible. That's right. Think of yeah. how the Christian Bible was written. John mm. on the Isle yeah. of Patmos getting yeah. these visions and writing mm -hmm. for our time today. That is an excellent point. I He's mean, working inspired. through people. And really, like, I know this is going to sound really weird, but the Bible is a collection of a bunch of stories. Mm -hmm. And that's how we learn about God. Mm -hmm. right. The devil has a collection of stories wow. yeah. Yeah. in a visual format. And that's how we learn about, about the him. devil's world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing. How about this character, Marilyn Monroe? Okay. Oh, yeah. Heard of her? Yeah. Okay, you heard of her? <laughs> Do you know what's really interesting? There is really not a person I have met yet, no matter what age, other than, you know, somebody that's really, really little. But if you're old enough to, like, watch, you know, play, play on the Internet or watch TV, then most people have heard of Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. This person is massively famous. So here's a little video clip with Marilyn Monroe. Monroe attributed her ability to affect the public to other entities that would inhabit her and take her over. She was known for entering into deep trances before each scene. 
One of Monroe's close personal psychics recalled how she would draw attention from the spirit world, asking for their guidance. When she saw a camera, any camera, she lit up and was totally different. The moment the shot was over, she fell back into her not very interesting position. And I don't know how to explain that. That's almost verbatim what Beyonce says about Sasha Fierce. Yeah, that's Fierce. exactly She's what I was like, thinking of. I'm more reserved and uh, I'm not very interesting, but when I'm Sasha, I can mm -hmm. sing strong and I can do all this stuff. Sasha is my alter ego. And when people see me, sometimes I think that when they meet me and they speak with me, they're expecting Sasha. And, um, I'm really kind of shy, and not really shy, but more reserved and um, nothing like Sasha. She can do things that I cannot do when I'm in rehearsal. I mean, I can try, but then it just doesn't happen. I can sing notes and sing strong and do all these things that when I'm just by myself, I can't do. The second that the cameras turn on, she's someone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. The second you turn them off, she's totally someone else. And he says, I can't explain that. It's interesting mm. how they attach this man to these people. Mm -hmm. You're saying the same spirit guide for the previous person is the same one for Yeah, that Marilyn was Kenny Moore. Kingston. Yeah, hmm. yeah. That's Isn't intentional. That yeah. yeah. These guys are around a lot of these dirty, mm -hmm. like, you know, spiritualistic things. That's why we see so much of the New Age. If the stuff mm -hmm. that's being written is coming from these psychics and these people who are communicating with spirits, mm -hmm. then what's the message that we're getting when we sit in a dark room mm. and stare at a blinking light, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Listen to what Marilyn Monroe says. Jacqueline Hyde, I'm more than two. I'm so many people, they shock me sometimes. I wish it was just me. Mm. She was tormented mm -hmm. by the voices that she heard in her head, all the communication. Mm -hmm. And I can relate to that. You know, you get to a point where you allow so much in your mind, and it's like, who's the real me? And it's like, yeah. I'm just trying to discover myself. And then when I come out of it, you see, you know, all these different thoughts and emotions that would come over you that they weren't me. Yeah. And it gets exhausting. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you're opening up your chakras, you're opening up your third eye, you're opening your life to these, these spirits, they're just coming and flowing right into you, and then it's like confusing to you, you know? She was tormented, but that's just the devil being in character. Mm -hmm. For the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come, the Lord comes to give life and to give it more abundantly. That's right. Yeah. That's right. How many guys remember I Love Lucy? Oh, I know that. Yes. Well, yeah. I know yeah? yeah? Lucy, Have you ever yeah. seen the episodes? No, I haven't seen the episodes, but I know the show. You've never seen an episode? No. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> I have no idea what is that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> At least I know what it is. Wow, yeah. Lucille Ball. The title <laughs> makes me think, I love Lucifer, you know. Uh, yeah, right, right, right. Lucille Ball's her name, so I think that's where they came up with the idea of the show. <laughs> but, but what's really interesting is um, she always had a particular phrase in the show that she was. It was a comedy show about her and her husband, mm -hmm. and they were always having these like funny like problems and stuff, and she was kind of the wild one, or, and her husband was always trying to like clean up after her mess and stuff mm -hmm. like this. She always had this saying where she would say, um, like something would go wrong and she would be like, don't tell my husband, don't you dare. Hey, I'll tell him the truth, don't you dare. Mm. Oh, and so man. she was always lying to her husband, mm. but it was mm. all wrapped in laughter. Mm. So it was yeah. like, you kind of like didn't want her to tell the husband because yeah. she would get caught or whatever like that. Mm. So there's a lot of little subtleties like that. And what people don't realize about Lucille Ball is she was actually a film actress when she started. Um, she wasn't a TV actress. In fact, if you were a film actress and you were to go down to the TV, it was like taking a step down. Mm -hmm. These were the low people, like TV. And, and so everybody wondered, why did you go from the big screen to all of a sudden becoming a TV actress? And it was because of this actress, Carol Lombard. And, they, and listen to this. It was the spirit of actress Carol Lombard who guided Lucille Ball into taking a chance on television and accepting the role to star in this television show called I Love Lucy. Now listen to this. The glamorous comedian who died in an airplane crash in 1942 appeared to Lucy in 1951. What? What's going on here? Why is it always a crash? Uh, the spirit uh, is What's going on here? She's supposed to be dead. Yeah. She's dead. <laughs> so wow. the spirit comes back and tells Lucille Ball, hey, 
you should choose this job as going and being this television star. Mm -hmm. And if you do, it, you, you will be famous. Now, why would the spirit world care? That's a good point. <laughs> because uh, Satan has an agenda. He wants to propagate his uh, message, you know? Go all the way back to what, the, what each one of the shows had in it. There was elements of lying, mm -hmm. you know, doing things deceitfully behind their back, but it was all wrapped in this laughter, and it's just breaking down the moral code of everybody in society. Mm -hmm. So the devil's got time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It goes back further than that teaser, okay? Um, we're actually planning on making a documentary about this, but you go way back and look at how technology was developed. A lot of these scientists, guys, they were into... Some of them would go to seances every night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of them admit that the spirits offered to help them and assist them in their work. And I always tell people, ask yourself this question. Why does a spirit want to help develop technology? <laughs> yeah. Right? Especially mass media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's because good, yeah. it's a teaching tool. Yeah. And I think, like, the laugh track thing, that's a form of brainwashing. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. like, you're watching something... And you see something that you know is wrong, but now you hear an audience laugh and you, oh, ha, 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 and you let your guard yeah. down. I mean, that's how a lot of stuff becomes normalized, you know, even like the homosexuality movement. You know, you had Will and Grace and the real flamboyant guy, hey, and then the laughter. And they, they bring, introduce it with comedy. And then subtly now you got to the point where, you know, there's a kid on uh, the Disney Channel who's like, I'm gay and... You know, he's like part of the main story and, and there's like this this uh, conflict or whatever, like where you're feeling sympathetic and stuff. And not to say we shouldn't feel sympathetic for people in general, but it's just the fact that how they introduce this lifestyle to make it normalized mm -hmm. through laughter. We've mm -hmm. come so far that the Disney Channel has put out things like The Descendants, where it's like these are the evil kids of the evil villains in all the stories, mm -hmm. and they're just misunderstood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. You know, that's the idea. It's like, so the devil started back here with a Christian nation that really had these values, and he slowly chipped away at them until he's able to just literally hand Until us they're normalized. whatever and we're like ah yeah eat it up like we're the evil characters we want them to win mm -hmm. you know and that's where he's going with all of this and he hates what we're doing right now yeah exposing his lies so let's talk a little bit about this in a modern setting because you know we've we've analyzed on this show superheroes you saw the one that we did on marvel mm -hmm. right so you see mm -hmm. kind of like some of the stuff behind what's yeah. going on in, in those stories oh, and so we're jumping into our generation now we're jumping up to okay. our generation so <laughs> cool. I'm, I'm leading you into some actors and actresses that you guys might be familiar with mm -hmm. this this particular gentleman um his name is alan moore that we're going to talk about he was a comic book writer he's written for he's written from hell swamp thing watchman v for vendetta mm -hmm. are these any things that you guys have heard of yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay so um i'm going to show you a clip of alan moore and what he really um, is into. He follows this snake god, interesting, mm -hmm. but it's a snake god, oh, yeah. called Glycon. That's and right. um, Glycon is where he gets a lot of his inspiration from. But listen to this. What's in it for you, though, following Glycon? I believe that every single individual human being should probably make their own peace with the universe. I mean, we're all of us different emotionally, we're all different physically, intellectually. It would be really odd if we were all the same spiritually. So, I mean, that's why I have a problem with religion per se, because religion, the very word, it comes from the same root word as ligature and ligament, and it means to be bound together in one belief, which right. I find a bit creepy and a bit unnatural. You can't have that conversation with a Christian fundamentalist. Yeah. The kind of what we call fundamentalism these days is basically entirely based upon 1930s tent show revivalism. Right. It goes back no further than about 80 years. And yet it's a very frightening and dangerous mindset because, I mean, as far as I understand it, at the moment there are genuine worries that, um, it, certainly in America, that this could actually negate science, yeah, that right. it could drag us back into a new dark ages. Yeah. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Wow. Anybody got any thoughts on what he said there? It all sounds great, right? Mm -hmm. It all sounds great. That's something that I would have totally resonated with. Like, how could we all be the same? Mm. How could we all have the same beliefs? You know, we're different people. But we're different in the kingdom of God, and we all have our own 
things to bring to the table, and we can have a relationship with the Creator. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about, mm -hmm. and that's what He wants for mm -hmm. us. And this is just, it's become so lonely. You're just kind of figuring it all out, and you're getting help and guidance from these beings, but there's no basis, there's no truth. Mm. Do you hear the kind of New Age philosophy that he's saying here? Oh, yeah. About? Because it's like, have any belief that you right. want, just not which one. Right. Christianity. Yeah, right? Yeah. Fundamentalist Christianity, that one's wrong, but mm -hmm. everything else is okay. Mm -hmm. That seems to be what I'm hearing with the whole New Age movement as well, wow. is it's literally like, there's all these different paths all over here, except for that one path right here is going to keep you in the darkness, and that's called Christianity. Mm. You know, Alan Moore, um, when he actually was, I think he was turning 40 years old, he, he threw a party and he all of a sudden wanted um, um, to do something kind of wild, and so he decided that he was going to become possessed at the party. <laughs> And he decided that he was going to become this magician. And so all of a sudden, it was like a lightning bolt hit him. Things got a bit strange, he says. And after looking back, he was probably in some sort of borderline schizophrenic state. Mm. He found himself seemingly in conversation with some sort of entity. Its presence surrounded his head, moving and speaking lucidly to him. And he said, I was very spaced out, God struck. You babble for a while like an idiot, but I must have been unbearable for two or three months. And now I've integrated that into the rest of my life. Wow, okay. he embraced it. Yeah, so, so here's what's happening. He's now incorporating this into his writing. Mm. So when he sits down and he writes those comic books, he's asking those spirits to help him in that writing. And whatever he's written in that is with the movies that they're making. And when you go to the theater and you see any movie from this man right here, what are you watching? You. Mm. You're watching the very thoughts that the demons want the world to know. Wow. Mm. It's interesting to me the image that he has behind him is very similar to the images you see for Kundalini. Right, right, yeah, exactly. You know, and, and, and this is something that I pulled from him. So, I mean, he's very into this. I mean, we, we covered this in The Replacement Gods as well. There's a lot of interviews with him in the, in the documentary that we made, and it goes into much more depth. He talks more about this idea of tapping into the spirits and all this kind of stuff. The writer, do you remember the TV show American, uh, or Six Feet Under? Heard of it, I never so it was an it. HBO show, it. and it was like a bunch of guys that worked at a mortuary, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You've heard of the movie American Beauty? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so True Blood. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are kind of older, but these are things. The, the writer of this was very much so into automotive writing as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, how about Hugh Jackman? I mean, you guys know who Hugh Jackman oh, yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. What was Hugh Jackman known for? Wolverine. Romantic comedies. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> no. Okay. Wrong guy. The Wolverine, right? <laughs> so, did you know that Hugh Jackman actually um, wasn't really like thinking he was going to be in in a major actor? Do you know how he became to be an actor? Soul to soul. <laughs> no, but it's very interesting. He went on the BBC and he was telling the backstory of of how how he actually got his first gig. Listen to this. It's interesting your, your path to, to acting because you, you were a journalism student, weren't you? So I'm still on hold. My journalism is still on hold. I, I literally was just putting it off. So I took a few part-time classes and worked at a gym. And at the gym, I met this woman who, this isn't a lie. It sounds like a made-up story, but I was, I was actually joining her up. And she was looking at me and she just went, <gasps> like that. I said, is everything all right? She said, you don't understand, I'm a white witch. <laughs> You've got to get into acting, immediately. I said, well, I'm doing a few part-time classes, it's funny you should mention it. She said, no, 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 you're going to be a big star, and I want you to meet this woman, Penny Williams. I said, who's Penny Williams? She says, she's an agent. Well, I met her, and she's still my agent, and the day after, I did an audition and got landed a role on Neighbours. The very wow. next day, wow. he gets an audition and books the role. Mm -hmm. mm, Why would a spirit literally talk through a medium mm -hmm. and tell him, you need to go talk with this lady over here and you will be famous. Mm. Why are they picking him? Why him? Uh, maybe because he's willing to do what they want. You know what? I think the spirit world is paying attention. They know, you know, who's gonna be an agent of them or who's mm -hmm. not. You know, and they're, they're, they're literally directing this. Like God is choosing people to go out and herald his message right. as well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? The devil's doing the same thing. He's hand-picking, mm. I want this one, 
I want this one. Mm -hmm. And so when we when we watch these movies, we often think like, man, that person got lucky. You know what? Yeah. You hear stories like this, and it's like, I don't know how much luck is involved in this. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. These guys are literally being handpicked by mm -hmm. the other side. Why? Because they're the preachers and pastors. They're the evangelists of Satan's messages. Mm -hmm. And they're often like the most attractive people, you know? Like right. the beautiful people are in Hollywood right. because... Satan wants to f pick a good representative, somebody that people look, they, they want to listen to and want to look at and stuff. You and know? if they don't naturally look like that, they're very open to doing yeah. whatever it takes to look like yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. You guys have heard of Jeff Bridges. Yep. Yes. He has won an Oscar for a movie called Crazy Heart. And where he portrayed a singer and he's being interviewed on, on Good Morning Today. And listen to the way that the interviewer asks him how he got into his role. And listen okay. to the words that she uses. And uh, Entertainment Weekly writes about you that you are a generously unvain actor, so appealing in midlife spread. In other words, you had to came, gain some weight and kind of channel this kind of sadness, really. Yeah. Uh, it's very powerful the way you do it because it's about a guy who redeems himself, who, who finds basically redemption. Yeah. Now, who are you channeling? Were you channeling Christopher's? Ch Johnny Cash you know, comes bit, to mind? Yeah, a bit, you know. In my long career, played so many extraordinary women that uh, basically I'm getting mistaken for one. And <laughs> no, really, I have a. I'm very clear about the fact that I'm the vessel for other people's stories and other women's lives. I try to allow the spirit of the character to live through me. So I just try to encompass and allow myself. I'm almost the vehicle to channel the spirit of the character through. So this, wow. is, this is literally a very common thing that's about acting. I took acting classes when I was in Los Angeles, and um, you know, it's very interesting because the classes that teach you the real methods of acting is basically to empty yourself of who you mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. so you can allow this other character to come in and, and flow through you. Mm -hmm. You can see the, the, the new age philosophy yeah. there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and why so many of these actors are kind of caught into this, whether they know it or not, but it's like literally the same language is what we heard you talking mm -hmm. about. Um, you Connecting know, your higher self. That's right. You know, higher self is a big thing. You want to anchor your higher self. That's right. So you have to kind of, yeah, meditate, clear your mind, and then your higher self can come in and live the life of your dreams. And so, letting other lives from these people that you're playing come out in you. Mm -hmm. Right. So I have a question. Is there any, is there such thing as fiction? If channeling these spirits or if they're trying to act out this thing if it's fiction that means it's never been like this no person to attach it to so how does that work you know i don't know like in that in that movie um with um jeff bridges in the movie with jeff bridges basically he was saying that she was asking him did you did you channel johnny cash and he said yeah yeah a bit of that and a bit of the other actor that that she mentioned so i think they're using these other actors as inspiration even mm -hmm. though it's about a fake character you know what I mean? It's like not necessarily about one person's life, but they're saying like Johnny Cash kind of lived this life, so I'm going to use his mm. spirit to play this Cashy. part. Spike Lee. You're familiar with Spike Lee? Yes. Yep. Yep. You ever heard of a movie called Malcolm X? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, historical movie about Malcolm X, right? In fact, when you watch the movie, the words that they used were literally taken verbatim from Malcolm X's mm -hmm. speeches. Mm -hmm. Denzel Washington was one of the actors that was in there. Incredible job. Yeah, he did an incredible job. And so um, um, Spike Lee is sitting here having a conversation with Denzel Washington, and they're talking about this one specific scene mm -hmm. where Denzel continued on past the script. Listen to what he says. Mm. <laughs> Malcolm X really wasn't hard because I had done the play Right. Chickens and, come home the roost, right? Yeah, so I felt comfortable that I could do it. And, you know, I got the gift of gab anyway. Mm -hmm. So I was cutting and pasting his speeches. Remember when right. we were shooting one day out there and, and you just kept loading the cameras oh. up. I just kept <laughs> going. I was making it up. You were making it up, Denzel. No, I wasn't making it up. I was using pieces. I know, but even that, though, I was a witness to this. You channel the spirit of Malcolm. Because I remember one specific time where, you know, we went to Malcolm's speeches. And once you finished with the text, you kept on going. Right, right, right. And we, we, we I didn't say cut. <laughs> right, right, right. We kept, kept loading the camera. We kept loading right. the camera. 
And there were many times in that film where we all had to pinch ourselves because we thought we saw the reincarnation right, right. of Malcolm. It wasn't about impersonation, right, you know. Trying to capture the spirit. The spirit and just trying to, you know, act as well. I'm going to look like him and that, but right, that's, right. that's just surface stuff. Mm. So that's check crazy. this out. Wow. This is just his conversation with Denzel. So Spike Lee and Denzel start talking about other actors and other movies, and Denzel gets a phone call from um, um, Will Smith because he was going to play Ali. Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to prepare for the role. Listen to the advice that um, Denzel Washington gives him. Hmm. The surface, though. Will Smith called me before he started Ali, and he was saying, what should I do? You know, And he, and he did the voice for me, and he had it. I said, I think you should go to Michigan and pray with Ali. When I did Malcolm X, I would just pray every morning, you know, before I came out of that trailer. I'm like, Malcolm, come on, you know, because it's not for me. Right. You know, it's, it's just, it's for him and for those, hopefully, that, 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 that he affected. Wow, this is wow. like gold, man. Deep, dude. <laughs> and it's them saying it. That's yeah. deep. Not us. That's the deep, mouth. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Malcolm. Mm -hmm. Come into me so I can act this. Dude, these spirits are messing with these guys. Yeah. Mm. Talk and about he's coming idols. from a good place, yeah. Mm. He's wanting to represent him and represent the culture in the best yeah. way he can. And it's just but he's praying to something. Mm. Inviting that to spirit invite it in. in. I like that to something. So it's not right. actually Malcolm. Right. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Not a God. Yeah. And he's giving advice to another actor saying the same thing. Phil, Oscar award-winning actor Denzel Washington told 60 Minutes exactly how he brings forth his best performances. Basically what I did was got on my knees and sort of communicated with the spirits. And when I came out, I was in charge. Powerful scene. Powerful scene. It, it was, I couldn't have acted that. I couldn't have written that down and made a decision to play that. So. So going back to this conversation where he's having with Pharrell Williams, listen to this. Spike Lee's telling Pharrell about this, this experience as well. It's like you're writing a treatment. I finally called Cut. I called Denzel. I said, Denzel, where did that come from? I mean, you went up five minutes after what was scripted. I said, Spike, I don't know. Five minutes, he rolled beyond the script. And I even saw another interview with Spike Lee, and I'll see if I can find it, where he was literally like reading the script, and he was just like, this, it's not even on the script. And then he's pulling up on his phone and stuff like this and reading the real speech, and Denzel is spitting off the real speech word for word. See, that's the thing. They're wow. inviting these spirits in, and then what? Like, mm -hmm. it's inside of you. Mm -hmm. when yeah. they, they decide when, when, yeah. when they come out. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, he, and he's like sitting there going, hey, 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 Denzel, like, yeah. where'd you What's get that? On? And yeah. he's like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Dude, like, there's something going on wild. under the surface here that's pretty wild. So listen to this. Mm -hmm. You guys heard of Jack Nicholson? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So do you know who Shirley MacLaine is? Mm -hmm. um, Shirley psychic. MacLaine mm -hmm. is one of the one of the actresses <laughs> that was hugely involved in the New Age movement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So she's at the AFI, mm -hmm. which is like American Film Institute uh, award show or whatever, um, and they are. Um, honoring Shirley MacLaine and she's telling where she gets her inspiration from and mm. she's talking about this one scene that she did with Jack Nicholson. Listen to what she says. When people ask me who is my role model in this business, I say you, Jack. I think why you're my role model has to do with the way you relate to vanity or the lack of it. I mean, I have to tell you. I just adore the fact that you don't care how you look. <laughs> I adore how you commit to the part. You don't care about your little bald spots. You don't care about your stomach. Remember that wonderful stomach. <laughs> you don't care about your wrinkles. This is all extremely important to me. Doing a love scene with, with, with Jack Nicholson is absolute middle-aged bliss. I mean, to lie in bed and rehearse a love scene, it's so funny, it's so spontaneous, it's so open. We're lying in bed and we're rehearsing the astronaut Garrett Reed love scene. He's explaining to Aurora what it was like to walk on the moon. She's loving it. And then we launched into the first take and two voices came out of you. Do you remember this? Two voices, and they were, they were simultaneous words, but they were two levels of sound. And I looked over at you, you were amazed, I was amazed, and you said, well, sure. 
Cheryl, I'm, I'm many different people. <laughs> I said, no, Jack, you're channeling. So they all know exactly what she's talking right. about. That's why they're right. like... because they all talk about that. Mm -hmm. Two they get it. different voices simultaneously. You, mm. I, you is... couldn't try that. Yeah. You cannot produce that. No idea. That's you know like I mean? textbook demonic possession. Yeah, I was going to say, I've mm. actually even, heard of that before, yeah, too. That doesn't even feel new age in what I saw. That mm. seems like straight demonic. Right, right. Yeah. These guys are literally tapping into this spiritualistic world to help them undertake these crazy rules. That's why I, I really honestly believe you see a performance from a particular actor and it is powerful. Yeah. You're just like, that, that, that was so amazing. Mm -hmm. But you gotta think, man, there's some demonic forces mm -hmm. working through these people. Wow. That un, they, they, were, they were alive when Malcolm X was there. They, that demon probably saw firsthand mm -hmm. the way Malcolm X acted and he's acting through you know, Denzel and, yeah. and, and going for that. How about uh, uh, this particular actor? You guys recognize him? Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. Nicholas Cage. Yeah. We played this on one of our other shows, but I wanted to show you just for, just for this case. So when he was um, um, preparing for Ghost Rider, this is what he did to prepare for his role. You've developed a, an acting discipline that you've referred to as nouveau shamanic. Is, right. that, is that correct? Yeah. What are the core principles? I've been told that um, all actors really hail from the early medicine men and the, and the shamans in the villages pre-Christianity where they would put on masks and, and act out and, and really would, they were probably pretty crazy, but they would go in and find answers to questions. Today you're called psychotic if you do that, but it's all, it's all uh, semantics. So what I would do is I'd put on Afro-Caribbean paint, like a white and black paint, and black out my eyes, so I look like this sort of Afro-Caribbean voodoo icon. And then I would sew in bits of uh, Egyptian artifacts that were thousands of years old into my costume and gather some onyx or tourmaline or something that was meant to have vibrations. And who knows if it works or doesn't, but for me it was an idea of like trying to stimulate my my mind or trick my mind into believing I was this this character from another dimension and I would walk on the set and then wouldn't speak to anybody wouldn't say a word so I projected this aura of uh, horror which created fear in my fellow actors which then inspired me to believe I really was this character exciting I'd love to be on set with you yeah thanks <laughs> he was feeding off of everybody's wow. fear but you think of also he's taking real shamanic artifacts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. putting them I and mean, you don't see that in the movie you don't know yeah. that something's sewn yeah. into the inside of his, of his thing mm -hmm. and I think that all these things like you know there's a reason why you can be demonically um, tortured like have you ever actually been tortured any of you guys any mm -hmm. have you any mm -hmm. demonic spirits or anything kind of like messed with you a little bit oh, oh yeah. yeah oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah was it something that you potentially had in your home that allowed them access to you I mean how do, how do they get into your realm and are able to even interact with you, and why don't they just interact with everyone? That's a great question. Yeah, that is a, that good, is question. a good question. <laughs> I think that literally we give them access through various different things. In yeah. fact, um, it, there's a guy named John Todd who uh, really um, was big with, with the music industry, worked at Capitol Records, and um, they would pray that the demons would go with every single record out. And he says, oh, you want to know how many demons are in your home? Go count your records. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was literally like they knew that the spirits could follow those records, and then that gave them access into your yeah. home. I got so, rid of all, I had all these channel books. Mm -hmm. I got rid of all of them. I threw them all in the recycling yeah. bin. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. I mean, yeah. it's why we're so hard on Disney and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. All the magic and sorcery and all that kind of stuff that comes with Disney because I believe that it gives the demons access just like he's talking about. Mm -hmm. I put these like, you know, sorceress types of things in my body and then all of a sudden now I can act this type of particular way. All right, so you guys, you guys know Robin Williams. He often was very tortured as a comedian, mm -hmm. you know, heard lots of uh, things in his life. I've seen um, interviews with him like talking mm -hmm. about all these like voices that he would hear in his head. And he was asked by U.S. Weekly, um, you know, what, what is his process? How is his acting? Um, and he said, it's literally like possession. All of a sudden, you're in, and you get this energy, and it starts going. And you know, later on in the article, he says, um, but there is also this thing. It is possession. In the olden days, you would have been burned for it. But there's something empowering about it. I mean, it's a place where you can be a Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde, where you can actually become this other force. Mm -hmm. So wow. he was explaining mm -hmm. 
that acting to him was literally like having something come in, mm -hmm. take possession over you, and you know we celebrate it in our world. Yeah. Whereas in the olden days, you'd have been burning. Yeah. You know, ever wonder for why they were burning people? I mean, I'm not for them burning people, but you ever wonder why? Like what they were trying to protect society from? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know. I mean, I think that uh, demonic possession has always been a fearful thing. And you think of today, look, the Venom movie that comes out, right? Mm. Mm. It's like now, now the guy that's possessed by this crazy evil thing is like the hero. Yeah. 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 yeah I think like, what is this? Taking Old Testament principles and a you know, using them for the modern time. Because you look back in the Old Testament, it's like, if there's a witch among you, <laughs> yeah, they're out the camp. You get stoned. <laughs> like, wow. You know, yeah. so they're just doing the modern equivalent and burning mm -hmm. them or drowning them or. Yep. Yeah, but it's it's not even. I don't think they see it as a demonic spirit that they're entering. I think that they see it as like a force, an energetic force of the universe that we can use freely. So it makes it feel and sound safe. Excellent, other people. Excellent point, because I see that as the same deception that happens in the New Age. Right. It's the demonic world that's literally communicating with you mm -hmm. and tinkering with you, but they give it this, like, it's this energy, it's yeah. this whatever orb, and to the actor, it's just, well, it's my process of how I get involved right. in this. Right, right. I don't think some of them, I mean, maybe some of them do. I don't think some of them really understand what's happening like I didn't. Right. I didn't understand what was happening. Right, and I think that's why it, it, it is a deception. The, yeah. You know, if possible, the devil will try to deceive the very elect. You mm -hmm. know, that's his mesh method. When Leonardo DiCaprio was in a movie um, called Total Eclipse, the director, Anisco Holland, said this about Leo. Leo's like a medium. He opens his body and his mind to receive messages coming from another person's life. A totally different director, when he was in Romeo and Juliet, Baz Luhrmann says this about Leo. With Leo, you might see 30 people come out of him no. in one day. Wow. wow. And you think, like, have you seen a Leonardo DiCaprio movie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? All of us and it's have. Like, it's like such a What's spectrum. What's the message that, yeah, that, act, that, that demonic world is wanting us to learn? How about mm. Keanu Reeves? Mm -hmm. Keanu is a very complex guy with lots of demons into him. I was trying to tap into that and utilize that, says director Taylor Hackford from Devil's Advocate. Wow. Man. Openly admitting these guys have Terrible, demons. Do you think there's Depp some kind of conspiracy behind um, Leonardo DiCaprio not getting an Oscar till recently after all the magnificent projects he's done? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. Some actors like Johnny Depp, same sort of thing. Yeah. He's been in all these amazing movies, yet he's, I don't think, ever won an Oscar. Mm -hmm. It's interesting really? because the one director said, you know, 30 different people, and here you have Donny, Johnny Depp saying, I'm 30 different people. Hmm. Like, what's with the 30? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Is right? that how many was Legion was or something? A Legion, yeah. I think, is thousands, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But isn't that kind of interesting? It Johnny is. Depp told Vanity Fair, I know I have demons. And I don't know if I want to get Goodness. rid of them altogether. I would like to experience them in a different way. I'm trying way. to understand myself, and they're dealing with 30 plus themselves. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh my goodness. Right. Think wow. of all those little voices that you have mm -hmm. to hear. And that's why I think you see Jim Carrey, literally, he cracked his mind. Mm. Yeah. He's emptied himself so many times, he's become so many different people that it's like he lost who Jim Carrey was. Heath Ledger, listen to what the uh, Los Angeles Times reported, Heath Ledger's creepy performance seems to have summoned up demons no one could imagine accessible to him. Mm -hmm. Like that's the Los Angeles Times. Mm -hmm. They're not like literally going, oh yeah, you know, there's a spiritual war going on there. <laughs> They're like literally like, yeah, this guy had access to demons mm -hmm. that other people normally don't. Speaking of Jack Nicholson, uh, when Heath Ledger died of whatever, suicide, drug overdose, whatever it was, uh, these people ran up to Jack Nicholson and told him that he had died and he actually said, I warned him because mm -hmm. Jack Nicholson oh, yes. was the first mm -hmm. Joker yeah, but... and he mm -hmm. said that he warned Heath Ledger not to do that part. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because mm -hmm. these guys are invoking spirits and they often can't get rid of them and I believe he evoked a spirit called Osmodius mm -hmm. and when he got Osmodius into him, it made him go insane and he was eating, you know, sleeping pills like it was going out of style mm -hmm. and couldn't couldn't ever get peace. So how about Marlon Brando? Heard of him. Yeah, he said something really interesting about acting. Listen to what he says about it. Why do you downgrade acting as a profession? You know, you know you've said over the years, well, uh, it's not a fit profession for a man. Uh, people lie constantly every day by not saying something that they think or saying something that they don't think or showing something that they don't feel or trying to give the appearance of feeling something that they don't, don't actually, I said that, didn't I? Yeah, but that's not acting. That is acting. So Marlon Brando describes acting as a lie, right? Mm -hmm. 
So what's kind of interesting about this is he actually got into a lot of trouble with this particular interview right here. In fact, the acting business was pretty upset at him to be like, you know, why are you calling acting a lie? And so um, Johnny Depp was then um, interviewed by Larry King. And this is many years later. Johnny Depp is a real big fan of Marlon Brando. And so the topic comes up of what Marlon Brando said about acting. Listen to how Johnny Depp answers this. It is a weird profession. As Marlon said, he had, Marlon had the best definition of acting that, that, that exists, you know. It's a strange job for a grown man. And that's it. Do that good. It's a strange job for a grown man. That's the, the, right? But he called something else that people in the business got mad at. He said it on our show. He called it lying for a living. Right. And <laughs> most actors say they're not lying. Hmm. Did you think that was an unfair expression? I think it's totally. I think it's totally right. Yeah, it's lying. It is lying. Why? Why? Why wouldn't it be? You can make it lying. You can make it not lying. You know, it's. You can find your own truth, but it's still a lie. You know what I mean? You're going to go to the craft service table. You're not Henry the Eighth, man. You're going <laughs> to. You're going to have some Fritos or whatever, man. You know. <laughs> have a donut and then go yay yeah. right you know he's not gonna like eat a giant chicken leg and chuck it somewhere and start screaming winch right <laughs> you know? so hmm. even johnny depp goes listen wow. let's call it what it is yeah you are lying for a living <laughs> shia LaBeouf. you guys know who this actor is yes yeah. he's kind of what an actor that's that's in our modern world here this is what he told usa today acting is a con at the end of the day you lie for a living you're deceitful and that is my goal, to be the best possible liar. <laughs> wow. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so if you kind of see a pattern here, these spirits are literally working through a lot of these actors. And it's so crazy in this business where they are pretending to be something that they're not. And it's like all of this together is really pushing messages out into the world. And that's where when we analyze things like the Marvel Universe or whatever, you see the spiritual world flipped upside down yeah. because the spirits are literally wanting to give you alternate information. Yeah. And that's kind of like what I see with the whole New Age movement. Mm -hmm. It's like they're presenting almost the facts. Yeah. They're just a little bit twisted around mm -hmm. um, to the other side. Mm -hmm. Anton LaVey, do you guys know who this is? Yes. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, the guy who started the Church of Satan. Listen to this quote. Television is the major mainstream infiltration for the new satanic religion. He even goes on to say the TV set or satanic family altar has grown more elaborate since the 1950s and from a tiny little fuzzy screen to huge entertainment centers covering entire walls with several TV monitors. What did he call the TV set? The satanic, satanic family, family altar. altar. I think wow. he even said that, you know, now homes have like, um, like a, a steeple. It's the antenna on every <laughs> yeah. home. Yeah, he was mm. saying it's like a church. Yeah. Yep. So I want to end with this. We know of this place in Hollywood called Hollywood, right? Mm. And the history of it really, it was, it was called Hollywood land. There was actually the word land on the end of the word. And over the years they dropped the word land and it was just called Hollywood. But do you know what the holly is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It comes from a plant. It comes from mm -hmm. a plant, it's a Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. Holly it is a sacred wood that witches use to make the wands that put people to sleep. Mm -hmm. And they would make these potions and that's, what, that's mm -hmm. what would put people to sleep. So I find it very ironic, mm -hmm. let's just say, that the very place that is, that is spewing all this information out to the world is literally this, this holly land, mm -hmm. that Hollywood that is literally putting people spiritually to sleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they hire the best liars. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. Well then, even in the new age though, a lot of people talk about not watching television. Wow. Interesting. Because I think it puts people in a trance of sleep. Interesting. Mm. And they want people to be spiritually awake and involved in the spiritual aspects. Wow. Interesting. So that's a whole, that's another... Yeah, that's kind know? of even another complicated <laughs> yeah. situation yeah. because it's like <laughs> they realize the power of it so right. they don't want you to do mm -hmm. it. That's what always wow. kind of tripped me out about like really heavy metal bands that were vegan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was just like, what do you care? You're, you're in these like really crazy environments yet you don't eat meat like what's the deal no a lot of those uh, hardcore bands were straight edge which yeah. was no drugs or 
animal activist and all mm -hmm. that. Yeah. 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 Some view animal life over even human life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys remember Outcast, the band? Yeah. I remember Outcast, I think one of their songs, they said, no drugs or alcohol so I can get the message clear. Mm. Mm. Like they wow. understood that that would benumb their ability to communicate and perhaps that's why, you know, the New Age movement doesn't mm -hmm. want that. Those are ambassadors for the New Age. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they don't want you zombied out like right. the rest of the world. Right. They want you promoting your thing. They want you thing. empowered mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sharing with others. Yeah. And yeah, the more you share, the more they give you. Yeah. That's why these actors are elevated. That's right. Because they're making such an impact. So let's give them all their fame and their money and make their life really comfortable. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I want to share two verses with you. We've read, read this verse many, many times. Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. Mm -hmm. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh the son or daughter pass through the fire, or useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a, con or a consulter with familiar spirits, a wizard, a necromancer, for all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord. Mm -hmm. When the Bible uses that word abomination, it means God hates these things. And so God hates magic, sorcery, anything that's going to talk to familiar spirits. And like you had mentioned earlier in that last episode, that the spirits felt familiar to you. They did, mm. yeah. You know, like something like, like they would come back in the same way. Mm -hmm. And um, the, there's definitely a reason why the Bible uses very strong language not to do that. Also familiar, like a dead loved one or right. an yeah. actor or whatever. That's right. Uh, it says in Leviticus 20, verse 6, The soul that turneth after such that have familiar spirits and after wizards and goes a-whoring after them, I will set my face against that soul mm -hmm. and will cut him off from amongst his people. Mm -hmm. I think the worst thing that you could hear out of, you know, with your ears is literally God saying, I'm going to turn my face away from you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God is very patient. Mm -hmm. He is yes, very yeah. long-suffering. <laughs> And, and for me to read these words and realize there is a point past God's forbearance is, is, a, is an alarming thing. And yeah. why is that? I believe that because it is so dangerous, mm -hmm. it can literally lead you away to the point where you can, you know, go well beyond, mm -hmm. you know, God's, and, well, not well beyond God's reach because he can reach anyone. Clearly, that was her testimony as well. But. Mm -hmm. And he's seeking to protect Mm -hmm. He's seeking to show his love. Mm -hmm. And if you're directly against that, you've made your choice and he'll respect that choice. But yeah. then he has yeah. those, you know, mm -hmm. people to protect That's from right. these forces. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and they're saying like, um, if you love me, let me go or something like. <laughs> Tough you know, love type yeah, thing. Yeah, like God loves you so much. All right, I'm going to give you over to this thing that you just keep going after. Mm -hmm. You know, I've tried over and over. And mm -hmm. Light and darkness can't coexist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I actually have a lot more slides on here, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to save it for the post show, okay. if that's all right with all you right. guys. Yeah. So if you guys want to see the rest of this, and uh, we got a couple other little clips, and, and we really want to continue forward with why is it so, um, so much coming out of our ministry to be careful what you let in front of your eyes, what you let in front of your mind, what you get yourself involved in. Why we feel so passionate about this um, is really because we have seen the evidence of where this actually can lead a soul. And so uh, thank you for watching. If you, you, you know somebody that would benefit from this kind of uh, a message here, why don't you share it? You know, post the link on Facebook or email it to some of your friends. And uh, of course, we want to hear your comments. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Leah, for joining us and coming on for a couple of shows. And uh, we hope to see you guys next Friday. Thank you.